so so even if we assume that we can solve this problem uh, the more pertinent question that we should ask ourselves is that are we done right in other words let's take a step back and think about where we started right so we were given a data set and we asked for that line uh, which on which we can find proxies for the data points such that once you find the proxies um, you can compress the data uh, using just a representative and coefficients for these uh, along this line um, now how do we do that well we are saying we can set up an optimization problem and solve it and it turns out that that also that solution to that optimization problem is also um, turns out to be the eigenvector of a nice matrix called the covariance matrix associated with the data set that's that that is um, incidental at this point right so but the more important question is let's say we think of this solution to this optimization problem as a black box we give the data set and then the line comes out we know how the what the black box did now but let's say for the moment we think of it as a black box now are we satisfied is the question we should ask right so are we satisfied with this compression that we have in all cases well not necessarily right uh, to give an example let's consider the following uh, picture right so from 2d let's say we go to 3d now right so now you you are in three dimension um, right so and let's say your data points are or or a bunch of vectors in 3d right so let's say there are a bunch of vectors here 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 and so on maybe here right now um, imagine that all these vectors were along a plane right so it's three dimensional space but then not all data points are scattered everywhere around they all fall along a plane now that's the critical structure that we have in this data set now the question is um, are we able to in some sense extract that structure are we able to uh, is our compression trying to extract the structure or not well what is our compression method trying to do it is trying to find the best line uh, on which you can project the data point such that you lose the least for this particular data set well, if we run our algorithm, we are going to get a line, right? So that line might be something like this. Maybe this is the line, right? So this line will be necessarily on the plane. I mean, you can think about why it has to be on the plane, because if it is not on the plane, if it is outside the plane, then you will, it will cost more to project on something outside the plane right so you can avoid that cost so necessarily the best line is going to be on the plane because all the data points are on the plane so uh, but where are where are these proxies going to be well these proxies are going to be along this line right so i'm going to think of all the data points which were originally on the plane um, using their proxies along along this line now the question is um, are we satisfied with this right so uh, is is this a good compression well, it is a compression uh, if you if you want to compress this definitely this is a good way to do it uh, but then does it capture the necessary structure in the data in other words what i'm saying is the following um, our hypothesis is that there is a line that best represents this data everything else that is the part that we think of as error um, well that the part that we leave out while reconstruction is something that we are going to think of as error but now if the data points lie along a plane then this part which we are imagining as error may not necessarily be error that might also contain some information right so because necessary information the structure is in a plane not on a line so the bits that we lose necessarily in this particular case will also contain some information and we might want to extract that information out also but then we have a nice black box algorithm which will give you a good line right so we don't want to lose the power of our algorithm that we already have at the same time we also don't want to just be satisfied with a single line uh, we want to somehow capture the fact that the data might have a might be lying on a plane two dimensional plane on three dimensional data so how what can we do now uh, you can do one thing right so if you observe this right so now what we are seeing is that these are the proxies the purple points are the proxies and um, the purple 
vectors or the error vectors. Now, if you observe this, uh, what we are saying is that the error vectors are not necessarily uh, error that might also have information which means that for example, if I just plotted these error vectors on three dimensional space again, right. So, how do how would these error vectors look like? Now, you can see already in this picture that all these error vectors will necessarily um, align in some direction, right. So, this would be the first error vector corresponding to let us say E1, E2, E3, E4, E5. E5 is just the origin in this case because the if x5 point was already on the line. This could be E1, this could be E3, this could be E4, maybe this is E2 and so on, right. So, now as you can see all these so called error vectors also lie along a line which means that there is some notion of information in the error vector also and we want we would want to extract that as well. Now, how can we do that? One procedure that you could follow is the following. <clears throat> now, you what we have done so far is we have a data point x which is in which is a d dimensional data point and what we are saying is that we will find some w for the data set and once the w is found we are going to represent this data point as its proxy which is x transpose w multiplied by w. This is the representative w and x transpose w is the coefficient corresponding to this data point. But now the error or the residue or what we might we have been calling as error um, that is just the remaining piece right. So, that is just x minus x transpose w into w. Now, what we are saying is that this might not be error, but might has might but might have information, right? So, but has information. Well, for one, if all of this were error, right? So, errors they would not necessarily line up along the same direction, right? So, if it's error the error for each data point has to be kind of in all over the place, right. So, that is the high level idea. So, now how can we work with this? Well, we could do the following, right. So, here is a possible algorithm and then we will kind of build this algorithm as we go along. Uh, a possible algorithm could be the following. You start with your original data set which is your input x1 dot 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 xn where each xi is in Rd. The first step is whatever we have been doing so far, find the uh, find the best line w by minimizing the error or maximizing the, um, the w transpose cw does not really matter uh, how we do this. For now, let us say we get that. Let us call this w1 instead of w. We will see why we, I am calling it w1. Now, what am I going to do? I am going to replace uh, x i the data point x i with its residue, right. So, the residue is this vector x i minus x i transpose w into w that is the. So, now I have a new data set, right. So, now all my the data set the second level data set is the data set that only contains the residue vectors with respect to the first line that I have found. Now, what I can do is I can repeat this procedure to obtain w2 uh, the second level right. Um, now, why should I start stop after getting the second level w2 right. So, the idea was the residue might contain information. Let us say now we had 1000 dimensional data right. So, we fit the best line we found the best line w1, we looked at the residue, well we let us say we think that the residue also has information. So, we compute the residue data set, again we find the second line and we could go on and on, right. So, we can go on till I mean up to the number of dimensions that you have, right. So, you can um, add more and more uh, data sets, create more and more data sets using the residues and we can keep doing this. 
Now the question is, um, well, this is a possible algorithm, um, but there are several questions that come up here, right? So one is, uh, um, how do we, uh, you know, do the reconstruction once we have these different uh, Ws that we have found? Uh, what does it mean to say that we are compressed? We have compressed here, right? So how do we reconstruct? What kind of compression are we achieving? This is a this is an important question. Uh, we'll answer that. Uh, but even before that, uh, another question that might um, uh, that might arise um, is a more basic question, uh, and we'll answer that, and then we'll answer the more pertinent question about reconstruction and so on. Um, another question that might arise is that the data itself uh, may not may look something like this, right? So you might have data uh, which which is like this even for one dimension right so i mean even for two dimensional data we might have data like this right so now remember uh, we are only finding lines that pass through the origin because our representative our notion of compression is representative and a coefficient multiplied by this representative which means if the coefficient is zero then the point the origin should be part of uh, the line that we are considering so um, what might happen is that uh, our data may not necessarily be around the origin, right? So now, uh, which means though the data is is along the direction um, pointed by the purple line here, uh, but if you really try to find proxies like the way we did uh, by looking at, you know, proxies like this, um, the errors might be much more than just projecting all the data points along the y axis. Sorry about that. Yeah. So, if you find proxies along the y axis, so it might so happen that, well, the y axis is uh, sorry, the x axis, the x axis in this case might be a better line in terms of the reconstruction um, than your actual line which you really want to get, which is which is capturing the direction in which the data is dispersed. Um, so, what can we do here? Well, one thing we can do is uh, to recognize the issue first. The issue is that data may not be centered. So, uh, one small fix that you can do is first do a centering of the data set in this possible algorithm that we have, um, which is first bringing your data such that the center or the origin lies at the center of the data such that when you look at when you search for lines that pass through the origin then you are necessarily finding the line which aligns with our intuition of the direction in which the data itself is dispersed so how could you do the centering well the centering is simple easy so you first find the mean of your data points which is uh, the average of your data set given to you um, and then you first make your data set centered by subtracting the mean from your data points right so for all x i um, for all i now what does that mean well you are subtracting the mean from each of the data points so now if you recompute the mean of this subtracted data set that would be the origin by definition because the mean itself is just the uh, average of your data points essentially you are you know moving your data points translating your data points such that the origin um, is the mean okay so that that takes care of the centering issue uh, but still our uh, previous uh, issues are still uh, pertinent right so several issues so i'm going to write down these issues and then uh, we will try to answer each of these in, in the coming videos, right. So, the questions uh, that I am going to leave ourselves with right now are the following, right. Um, of course, the first question is how to solve uh, max of w, w transpose w equals 1 or norm w squared like how I have been using w transpose c w, right. Um, of course, I did hint at the answer to this that this will be an eigenvector solution, but we have to think about that a little bit more carefully. Uh, the second thing is that, well, this in this possible algorithm, so how many times should we repeat the procedure? Procedure of computing the residues and then finding the line that best fits the residues, right? Uh, repeat the procedure. 
perhaps more importantly is the third point right so where exactly is the compression happening now in the algorithm earlier it was clear that we were finding one single line we were finding proxies along this line uh, and we knew that uh, how the compression was playing out right so uh, where exactly but now it's not perhaps not that obvious where is the compression really happening um, and the fourth point is that well earlier we know that it's a representative and a coefficient uh, and then representative multiplied by this coefficient will give us the proxy now we have multiple lines uh, perhaps multiple coefficients so the question is what are the representations that we are really learning using this right so these are some questions that we need to answer to understand our procedure better um, and we will see that all of this will tie together nicely to um, whatever you may have learned in your uh, linear algebra classes already um, in a machine learning foundations course um, if not you this might give you still a different way of thinking about uh, uh, some of the algorithms that you may have already seen right so if you answer all these four questions carefully then that will lead us to a very very solid algorithm um, in data science which will be our first algorithm for uh, this course um, in, in which is a representation learning algorithm for unsupervised learning. Um, I will we'll talk about what this algorithm is once we answer all these four questions um, and uh, think about these four questions to see if you already have some ideas about what are the answers for these. So, I will leave you with these questions for this point and we will come back and answer uh, uh, all these questions and develop the algorithm that we set out to in the next video. Thank you.